Welcome to the Connor Council Show. Happy New Year. It's 2019. It's been a while. Um, well, actually, it has been a while. We just haven't uploaded a few videos because we've been off. Got to give people time off, apparently. It's a shambles. It is. Let's start with all important. Do you watch the Mayweather exhibition fight? No. You haven't seen it? I haven't seen it. Was it good? It was, that was the boxing match or the, with the, the mixed martial arts Japanese guy, Tenshin Nusakua. Oh. And he was like, I'm not doing it. And now they've released the information. And. Um, uh, he got paid eight million quid. He did him in one round. Um, you should bring it up really on your, on your laptop. Oh, no. um, it, it may have looked like a heavyweight compared to him, and it was just it was a point where he was just toying with him, and he hit him so hard at one stage the guy literally just moved off of <laughs> off of the screen almost. It was ridiculous. So what rule set they fought him? Well, boxing? this was again was the mixed martial arts fight where Mayweather got to only have to box, and I said like, the next fight. Mayweather, I saw um, I got a Facebook thing sent to my WhatsApp. What was the thing? It was a picture of a Facebook sent to my WhatsApp. It was. Uh, Next uh, fight, mate, with the guy, he's fighting a lion. Can't scratch, use its teeth or claw, <laughs> has to be heavily sedated, and he gets to use a grenade launcher. So the other guy can kick? No, like, can kick, no, exactly. Really? So the other guy basically was an amateur boxer, was a decent kickboxer, but had to fight a guy who was one of the greatest of all time boxers. In a boxing match? And he, yeah, Mayweather was about 30 pounds heavier than him. That's ridiculous. Mm. It, was, it was stupid. Um, it was fun to watch, though. A hell of an uppercut. <laughs> There's an uppercut where it literally just looks like Mayweather just knocking out a small boy. I, I'd say that's what he is. It's a the greatest of all time versus a small boy. So one of the best YouTube videos ever. That's awful. I'm gonna watch it though. Vaping in the news. I'm here. I'm David. We've got here Freddie with you, and we're gonna talk about what's been going on while you guys have been away. Uh, I brought some news to the party today. Um, the uh, Vupu are in doo doo. Vupu are in doo doo. So Vupu, the uh, manufacturer of hardware, make some good mods and some other things. They have um, done a sponsored advertisement, advertisement, advertisement. That's the one on a YouTube channel, which is known for pranks. Um, where it's kicked them in the backside is the average age on the analytics is 10 to 15. So they've been getting slammed all across Twitter, where they look like they're undoing a lot of the good work. I think it was vaping with Vic has uh, yeah. has panelled them. It's panel, is that word panelled them? Panned. Panned them, panned. yeah. They got panned. I think it's because as well, because there's YouTube and there's YouTube kids, so parents can lock off all of the stuff. Lock that off. Kids yeah. They get lock off. Get locked right off. Kids get lock off. And um, but his videos are in YouTube kids. YouTube kids. Yeah. His his channel is. I didn't even know. So okay, so it's com they've literally just advertised to a yeah, kids market. Yeah, it's not network. Why on earth would they be doing that for? Yeah. It's odd. Yeah. It's not a choice. So was it YouTubeKids.com or something? YouTube.com slash. There are YouTube nights as well, you know. Because <laughs> you've got other, there are always other they're YouTube other. nights, yeah. It's their other brands. Yeah. <laughs> and hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, what's the other bit of news that I brought? So I've got two bits of news. Um, Vupu and Doodoo. -doo. Um, prison vape kits. Prison vape kits. Prison vape kits. So um, you always hear these stories where they go, prisoners have got a TV. Prisoners have to pay for the TV. In fact, the average price of a TV in a prison cell is about eight pounds. It was probably, um, you know, when we send hardware or electronics over to like Africa and Nigeria to be recycled. Yeah. Well, basically, what I think our prison system does, they go and rebuy them again. Oh, when they're sick of it. Yeah, it's there's such, a, and, and then so a prisoner will pay for one pound, two pound a week. So over the course of a year, they pay between fifteen and hundred pounds for a TV that's probably about eight pounds at a boot fair. Um, so we make profit on that. That's but, good. Um, so the, the idea is that in some prisons they've, they've tested out banning smoking. Yeah, in Scotland there's a nationwide ban now. Yeah, and to see how it helps prisoners. And it's had quite profound effects in terms of, well, it's cut down bullying because they haven't had the got any burn, mate, where they're not having to borrow money. Um, it's reduced crime within the prison. It's reduced offences within the prison where people are caught dealing tobacco and then other ancillary products. Um, it's helped people's health and well-being. And so the idea of the press was that there was the Ministry of Justice spending 150 grand in Scotland mm -hmm. to encourage vaping in prisons. Now I know in prisons they'll be selling those products as well on the actual canteen. So again, there'll be money made by some private contractor, uh, which won't lose the taxpayer any money. But I saw a post by, I think it's effectively the Scottish version of the UKIP, Scottish Libertarians on Twitter. And they're saying, oh, it's 150 grand for Scottish prisoners. Should they get 150 grand? And I, th I was thinking, well, what is it up against? I mean. If the cost to give patches and Champix pills and the current status quo is excessively more expensive than 150 grand to get them off, off of smoking mm. and probably healthier and 
maybe reform in other areas as well and learn a good habit is probably value for money. Plus, I mean, if you've, if you've banned all smoking and you've got a building full of people who really want to smoke, imagine the, the carnage it's going to cause if, if they don't have so they anything else. Yeah. This is one of the things they found. But also, um, prison cells for a long time were classed as their own domains, uh, residences. So you could smoke in prison cells. So one of the few places in, in the UK where even though you had a public smoking ban, you could still smoke. So prisons stink of cigarettes. The cells stink of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. people, people are locked up in... In the local prisons and the closed prisons, 23 hours a day sometimes, and there's just smoking all day in there. And then you've got prison prison staff who don't smoke, perhaps, who are exposed to that second-hand smoke. Yeah. So, um, you know, if the 150 grand is going to benefit the health of the staff that work there, then that's no bad thing. But it's just, I think it's one of those typical scare stories they try to bring, oh, 150 grand for prisoners. Well, there's 100,000 prisoners in the system, and that's about a pound per person, so yeah. 150. Yeah, they spent it on 7,500 kits. Mm. So, 20 quid a kit. What kits are they, do you reckon? I don't know. Probably, I saw a picture, but I don't think it is the actual kit. Right. But what are they buying? I wonder what kits are they doing? If they're buying 7,500 kits at 20 quid a kit and they want to start a kit, they're being. They're being ripped off. They're, they're being ripped really off. Kits. Yeah, they're either buying. Yeah, they're, they're getting them Vupos. <laughs> <laughs> they're all getting a Vupo wholesale price. Yeah, that doesn't seem. I reckon I'd give a lot more. Yeah. They need to be used vacant juice wholesale. Yeah. Given finance. Send them a login. And my third bit of news for those who haven't seen the Twitter storm, a, uh, a chap wearing, it seemed quite a completely cordial bloke, went into a is it Vapor Wild? Um, Vapor Wild in America wearing a t shirt saying Trump. Um, and the guy behind the counter went absolutely rago <laughs> and refused to sell it. If you notice I'm shaking, it's because I'm freezing cold in this basement. It's um, our studio, the basement. Um, went absolutely rago and refused to serve. I'm going to put the actual footage up on the screen so you can see it, but do check it out. We're going to post a link as well on our story and on the video afterwards. Um, was he which wouldn't serve him because he was a Trump wearing t-shirt? Because he wore a t-shirt and he, uh, he didn't like mm. it. So he absolutely lost it. His idea was that you know, Trump's a racist, therefore you're a racist. Um, there was a black chap in the shop, I think he was quite embarrassed at the time as well, yeah, and he was getting, getting the shopkeeper to try and hurry up and serve him. It's a really funny video, you've got to check this out, because the guy, when I say he went rago, I mean he went, <laughs> he didn't go rago, because that makes him give him any credit that he's got some kind of ninja skills. He started screaming, screaming to high heaven, he's just an employee, I say just an employee, I have to offend everyone who works for, sorry guys, <laughs> just an employee, he treats them like shit. Um, um, and... Uh, <laughs> um, and it's, I think he's been, been sacked now. He's been sacked. He's been sacked. It's hilarious. And then at the end of it, the guy was like, I just want to buy that e-liquid. This is the worst American accent. And so in the middle of the rain, he's like, I just want that naked juice, strawberry, <laughs> in 6MG. <laughs> um, but check it out, it's hilarious. It's um, it's but what I find funny about that is, so the guy obviously has an issue with Trump because in his eye, he sees him as a fascist or some sort of writer. But really, if the other guy's refusing to serve someone, because of their beliefs. That, to me, is the very epitome of fascism. It's a very fascist way to conduct yourself. It's it? the most like fascist thing you can do. I'm going to refuse to serve you because of your beliefs. Are you going to refuse to serve someone because of their religious beliefs? Hmm. You might as well refuse to serve someone because of the colour of their skin as well. He is what he hates. Yeah. There we go. Well, he's embarrassed himself. He, he's embarrassed. Go home to cry to his mum. <laughs> the fool. That's my political corner. Uh, over to Real News with Freddie. Um, so, we've got Altira, which is the... It's a huge tobacco firm. I saw this. Yeah, How much was it? Opera. So they've um, it's for thirty five percent of Jewel, and they've they've had to pay twelve billion. I bet if Jewel had gone on Dragon's Den, they'd got a far worse deal. Yeah, they'd got fifty percent. <laughs> took a silly moment with got give them a fifty grand. They reckon that they've got thirteen hundred employees, and it works out as an average of about one point four million dollars per person. Well, that's what they've said they were gonna. They've said they've apportioned. Um, Based on how long they work, a big for. chunk of money, it was like two billion of that, twelve billion they've got, that they're going to give, on on average, around each employee around a million pound bonus. Crazy, a million dollar, whatever it is. But yeah, I mean they're they're doing some really cool things um, with it, which I think is pretty good. So they're obviously going to have access to all this sort of Marlboro shelf space. There's going to be coupons that go on the packets. Oh, trying to encourage them to switch over. Yeah. That's really smart. It's really, I think it's pretty good. So the, it values them though, how much was 34 billion? 38 billion for the overall valuation, but which is double what they, they did an early round of investment um, and it was a valuation of half of that. So that means they value them at 20 times earnings. Yeah. But then, this, is, this, is, this comes into the fact that 
only, only literally a week and a half ago they said about, or it was in the paper about two days ago, that vaping has taken a hundred billion dollars off of the, was it pounds? It's a hundred billion of something. Um, yen. Yen, askudos. <laughs> 100 billion of skudos. 100 billion or something. Um, so it's, you know, that's, that's impressive. It's a chunk. Yeah. Um, 100 billion other pounds or euros or, or dollars. Either way, we're, kind of, we're in the same ballpark of a lot of money <laughs> off of the tobacco industry has gone to vaping, um, which is remarkable. <laughs> I still find it remarkable. I know um, I was having a bit of a having Twitter beef today. Check us out on Twitter, they produce UK. Um, I was having Twitter beef with Forrest, who are a uh, smokers action group. Um, and their boss said, who actually liked his own tweet as well, who likes your own t- He liked his own tweet through his own organisation, as if he'd double won, you know. It's terrible. I got told off for doing that on, um, on Instagram. I kept liking all of the... Your own posts? Our own posts. So he told you off Not me personally, yeah, Hannah was like, no. Oh, OK. It well, wasn't Instagram and said, hi there, it's, no. Mark, hi there, it's Mark Zuckerberg. Um, I just want to give you some tips, Freddie. Uh, don't like your own post. No, it's your wife. Um, the um, but yeah, he liked his own post um, as if that reinforces his point, which is that's the sign of a person who's lost an argument. Um, but his point was most people don't get on with vaping for a smoker, and I said you should change that to um, the majority of people do get on yeah. if they use them, uh, but there are a substantial number of people who don't, um, but not most. Um, his point was well, no, there's uh, some people still dual use, dual, not dual use. Um, and the people who haven't, who haven't yet quit. And I said, well, you're conflating the argument. You're conflating it between saying people who haven't yet adopted vaping therefore couldn't get on with it. I thought it was a bit stupid. That was it, really. Yeah, we beefed. Um, I think we're <laughs> friends now. I think he then subsequently liked a post. No, he liked his own post. That was it, yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, but um, there are still an awful lot of people who haven't, haven't even quit vaping. Yeah. Quit smoking, sorry, and they're vaping. I know there can be people who have just like, tried it a couple of times. Yeah, there was, I think it's like 30% of smokers who haven't quit yet believe that vaping is worse than smoking. Even though Public Health England came out as well, and at the same time as that conversation that sort of 100 billion has come off of the tobacco industry, Public Health England have reinforced their point saying that this is substantially safer for you than, than, than smoking. Um, and so it's, it, it's surprising that so, there are still so many conspiracies out there where people believe you, you ask someone nowadays where they get their news from and they go oh, I don't use the mainstream media I get my news from Facebook and YouTube right. that's not the news no. that's someone's opinion primarily unless of course this is news this is this is this is highbrow news what we're doing right now <laughs> fact based substance highbrow news I'm just waffling um, but there's so many people who still think it's uh, dangerous more dangerous. how can it be more dangerous than smoking mm. I'm asking you a question oh <laughs> it can't well, it depends, well, it depends what you're... Uh, yeah. depends what, you're, what Obviously, what you are vaping in your device. But as long as... As yeah, petrol. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. But if you're buying vape liquid... I just don't see... Well, it's, it, yes, it's... You've got, when your Clearly. body's like that, it's, it's substantially... Anyway, I'm off. What else is going on in the world? Well, the next bit was um, talking about that Public Health England um, campaign. They've done another one. So is it in addition? Is it, cause I, just, I mean, I picked yeah. it up just from a tweet, but... Yeah. But no, they actually released like a whole, uh, they did a video where they did the whole, you've got like a bell jar and um, they've got a cigarette poking out at the end of it and it draws the air through. And they've got some um, cotton balls and it shows you like a... We'll, like show, a we'll show the picture up on the screen of like this. Yeah, and it shows you a week's worth of smoking how the cotton balls look and they're, they're just tar covered and they're like putting it across a piece of paper and it leaves an absolute stain on it. And then the... Uh, done that a few years back, didn't they, as well? Yeah. I think all, or certain e-cigarette mm-hmm. companies have done that to show it. And they've done, they, then they did one with the, the vaping, and they were just like, it was like a tiny bit damp. Just from what, the place, right? what, what sort of power, what sort of liquids, what sort of... They were using an ICOS, one of those heat not burn tobacco devices. Oh. So still, which is, I mean, is the general consensus is that vaping is even better, better for you, than, you than, 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 than heat not burn. So that's interesting, so using that yeah. made a substantial difference. I thought it was quite good, because it's too, it's, it's... I think it highlights it better than there's. So what is it then? I mean, you, if, you, if, if you use, if, it, if it's, because that's similar to the results they had with the e-cigarettes. Yeah. So they did not use an e-cigarette at all for that? No, it was a heat not burn icons. Okay. I wonder if that sounds like a very heavily lobbied opportunity from ICOS. Yeah, possibly. Um, that's very cynical to, because it's the only product out there in the market that does, well, it's not, you know, you've got... This is a heat not burn device. Yep. It's a dry herb vaporizer. 
You can stick your dry herbs with your CBD flower in it. That's essentially what the Icos is. But to use the Icos is quite interesting. They've used a cigarette company's product. I mean, they didn't jump up and, up and down about it, saying this is this is the product of something that's just sort of stuff. So it's literally, it must, it's an effectively, it's, it's a point <coughs> of flammability, isn't it? Hmm. If you're heating that and it's had a, a drastically reduced, well, so, so that was, that's obviously the tar, isn't it? Yeah. Did they test for the chemicals that were produced? Uh, no, the video was just to highlight. Just to cut the, just the, the visually, tar. this is, that could not be good for you, can it? No. It's, the, it's always been the tar, a long been a problem, isn't it? That's what sticks in the ceilings as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Interesting. That was pretty good. Um, Got another one. So uh, there's research from the University College of London, Institute of Epidemiology and Healthcare, finds that vapes are not renormalised in smoking. So again, just to so what is it? What is epidemia? It's um, it's a good word. <laughs> Someone's not done the research. <laughs> what is epidemiology? Something related to healthcare because they're um, talking about it in the same. I've heard the word epidermis before, that's the layer of skin, isn't it? Epidemiology. Epidemiology. Yeah, finds that it's not doing that. It's not really normalised in smoking. So that's you didn't find out what the word meant, did you? Find out on <laughs> <laughs> frantically Googling. So <laughs> how, what, was, what was their research? What was their study to say that? Um, so they did uh, data from 13,209 participants um, of Robert West's smoking toolkit study, where they were just... Um, Have you got back to smoking? I, mean, I said this the other before, didn't I? I said that if you want to ban, if you're worried about flavours and that, you know, encouraging people to go back to smoking, ban tobacco flavour. Again, a very widely unpopular comment for you to say, but I just, I think there's, um, it was the, it's, I, I responded to a tweet on this as well last night. I was having a, a Twitter frenzy about one in the morning. Well, I'll do some tweeting, tweeting, tweeting. Um, and the comment on people going back to smoking, it just doesn't stack up. If you've been vaping strawberry, non-nicotine, because um, you like the flavour, you like the clouds, um, or whatever, or the idea of going back to a cigarette that stinks, no. that affects your lung capacity, and so many other areas as well, it smells, tastes completely different, tastes, it just, it's... And could my, you imagine... My taste buds couldn't handle it. Having to put your vape down and having a cigarette. There's no way that you would have another one. It'd just be... It's also annoyingly impractical as well. You have to. It's, you couldn't get away with just you know punching a cheeky vape on a. <laughs> I, was in, I was in the pub on New Year's Eve, um, you know, and you did the old. Uh, <laughs> so when you sort of breathe it down your jumper yeah. and it comes out your arm sleeves, you can't do it with a cigarette because it smells yeah. so noticeably. You know, someone likes a cigarette on a train. These days oh, you notice knows, it. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You can't. You know, you can't hide that. Um, maybe you can still slightly get away with. <laughs> That's good to know. So, good. where was the report published? Did they did they get much attention for it? Good question. Um, it's published in BMC Medicine. Okay, so it's a medical yeah journal. BMC. Yeah, British <laughs> <Medi> <laughs> comic. Yeah, <laughs> it's available in the British Medical Comic, uh, which is a, a, a interesting read. Yeah, so that was good. It's nice. Enlighten me with more news, or is that the end of your news? No, I've got another one. Go so on. uh, this is uh, CBD related. News story. So on the 20th of December, we had the well, the Americans had the Hemp Farming Act. I, so I've yeah, seen this. The Hemp Farm Bill. It's been approved now, isn't it? Yeah, it's law now. Yeah, it's fully law. It's happened. And it's passed all of Congress and yep. and the other things that happens when it happens to have law in America. Yeah. No, it's all. The Queen's approved it. <laughs> well, I'm sure she probably tweeted about it. Yeah, I hope so. Do you follow yeah. the Queen UK on Twitter? She's got. I didn't know she had. Twitter. It's not her real Twitter, no. <laughs> She's not sat on there. No, it's not. No, as in, it's not even her Twitter. It's someone's oh, registered right. the Queen underscore UK, oh. and she'll be like, "Oh, lovely New Year, got a banging hangover." <laughs> <laughs> Philip's pissing me off. <laughs> um, so it's been approved. So this is. So this is an interesting. And I want to do a separate. Uh, I want to do a separate podcast on this. Separate chat on this. Um, this is profoundly interesting for a number of reasons. One of the things, so we're, we're a business to business podcast primarily or vaping news. And one of the things when we started doing this, we, we thought there wasn't a great deal in terms of business stuff in our space because it's a vice. Uh, I can see the rest of the team behind the cameras are laughing, hugely laughing. It's dead air and they're just covering their mouths up. But I'll find out what's going on a bit. Um, anyway, the, um, it's profound because we're in a vice space. We can't advertise, market our products the way we want to, we want to do. You can't just go Facebook advertising and go bash, mm. um, which is one of the simplest tools for everyone. So it's profoundly important because the, um, 
we're in a vice space and we can't advertise um, stuff for vape shops, for example. You can't go, oh, you know, find a local. There used to be a way we used to get around it. We used to get around um, Facebook advertising rules by having uh, a blog that was unrelated, and we would then. Um, I'm happy to give away this free advice now as well. Uh, we used to have a blog that was unrelated, and we would sponsor a post or we'd promote an advert that linked to a URL that was a frame redirect. That means when you clicked, so if I, I don't know, yellowcup.com, you'd go to yellowcup.com, it would still say yellowcup.com at the top, and it would have your website in there. And so you could get away with it because they'd only just check the index bar, the, the title bar. And now they're a lot smarter and they can check out the content of the image by doing using their AI, so you can't really use it. CBD, um, you can get it on the barrack, you can get it in petrol station supermarkets around the world, but you still can't advertise it the same as vaping. No. But they, that's because it's primarily a lot of the laws that Facebook and those people follow is based on what the American laws are. Um, CBD could be legal worldwide. You could advertise it worldwide except for America, and it would still probably be difficult because that's where their head office is. They say... They say, I don't know who they is. <laughs> they say, the, if the, I'm waffling the hell. If the hemp farm, okay, right, in short, if it gets passed, people have discussed that then Facebook will allow you to advertise CBD yes. products. Um, it's been passed. Have you heard anything about this? I've not seen anything yet. But there you go. I made a real <laughs> build up of that as well. Give me a vape. <laughs> it, it gets worse than that because we've, okay. we've had, I don't know if we can name them, but we had a. Um, a company we used to use for international currency transfers. Yeah, they, just they name it. Closed them. our account. Let's transfer wise. Transfer wise, you're a disruptive company, and you completely forgot you're a disruptive company at the moment that we happen to sell a minuscule part of our business on our e-commerce site. Sell CBD, minuscule. We have never bought with Transferwise CBD overseas. Most of our CBD we order from the UK. Products are manufactured in the UK. Yet because on our website, on our e-commerce site. We sell a small percentage of CBD products. You refuse to let us do uh, money transfer to buy hardware from people like Smock and Aspire. That's uncool and you've forgotten who you are. You're not a disruptive company anymore. You're part of the elite. So, <laughs> <laughs> Don't use TransferWise. Who do we use now? Uh, we, use, we actually use a, a broker. A broker. What's, what's the company called? Worldwide Currencies. Worldwide Currencies. Uh, check them out. We'll give them a rep because they aren't like that. Yeah. But anyway, it's, yeah, it's good. So you think now that... Um, We'll hopefully be able to use companies like that. They're going to focus on that one. So we've blown it. We've blown it. You know what we need yeah. to do again? I'm going to use you. But I'm hopefully, why should I? <laughs> there'll be a few more companies that are allowed to do it. Stripe so. as well. Stripe. So I, I, so I do I do blogging on um, on a platform called medium.com. I recommend it as well. So if you run a business, um, you can be putting content, content out in every single different way. Don't just use Facebook. Don't just post on Instagram. Cover. If you're B2B, look at things like LinkedIn. I say this before. It's a really good platform. And look at all of them, don't just hit one area. If you do a YouTube video, get that transcribed, create a blog, link it back to your video, make your small videos, stick them on your Instagram stories, really you know, cover every base because people consume information in very, very many different ways. We put this out on podcasts as well because not everyone can sit there driving, watching YouTube, unless you're a taxi driver and they seem to be able to do it. In Hong Kong, we have like five different smartphones up on the screen to do their currency trading. But um, the, uh, Bitcoin trading. But um, was it? medium.com, so there it's a writing platform. So it's a bit like Quora or a bit like WordPress, you can write a blog story. And they have a partnership program where if you get loads of reads, you get like a, a commission. You get a oh. share of their f earnings they do. Nice. And so in order to set up a writing platform, writing account, they make you set up a Stripe account. I'm like, I just want to write, I don't really want the money for it. I don't know if anyone want to pay me for my writing, yeah. my, my, my waffle. Um, and so I set up a Stripe account and I used my, my email. And it said, have you got any other businesses and stuff? Or what's your background for that? And then, sorry, sorry, we can't give you an account. I don't want an account. You made me sign up for an account. And they're like, oh, you have a CBD business. No, I've got a writing account on Medium. Yeah, but obviously because of CBD, we can't do it. It's like, nothing to do with CBD. It's medium.com. And I'm talking about it. And one of the posts I did actually was I, I criticized Stripe and people like TransferWise when disruptive companies lose their way and they forget they're, no, they're a disruptive company anymore. Um, well, they wouldn't let me have the member of the Medium Partner Program because I happen to have a business at CBD. So I'm being completely unrelated business and I'm not able to have a Stripe account for a writing blog platform because I happen to have a CBD website even though they are two separate things that's nuts that's ludicrous yeah so that's where we are with it so yeah. if, if I mean, that's going to change the, that's going to change the marketing uh, landscape if, if you can keep an eye on this because if you can uh, this gets properly put through to I me mean, it'd be an interesting thing to have a chat with or to see if Facebook or Instagram respond to this yeah because I haven't seen an update in their um, 
because we've got um, like ad accounts, there should be like an update in there, terms and conditions. And yeah. I wonder how long it take to react to it. I mean, because I know one of the business podcasters out there, Gary Vaynerchuk, I mean, he's, he's heavily in the cannabis space now. He, he, his thought is the, that place is going to go enormous. It's huge, isn't it? I mean, it's, you've got one of, the, one of the trending keywords right now is CBD oil for dogs. Um, I think dogs like to get it from pets at home rather than Holland Barrett. Um, that, I mean, pets, pet industry is huge. Yep. Health and wellness industry is huge. You've got um, George Cruz, the rugby player, um, who is launching his own CBD brand for sports things. You've got the sports industry. You've got vapors who want it. You've got people who recreationally smoke cannabis who probably want something for the CBD element. Um, it's such a... So many different niches it's going into. CBD beer now as well. CBD beer. Yeah. Um, which one, what's the brand that does that? Um, they're called 420... Classic. Something. 420 Brewery. 420 Brewery. Something like that. Um, but yeah, they, they put terpenes in there as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, they sound really good. They use some terpenes uh, in certain beers as well. Okay. Um, which one is it? We, I did a blog on this recently. I think it, I don't know if it's mycine or, or what the others. But there's certain beers in order to create that flavour. I mean, because terpenes aren't just in cannabis; they're in the plant, what the plant world. There's thousands of them. And you know when you open a bottle of Bex and you've got that smell that smells like cannabis. Mm. That's a terpene. All right. Yeah. It's famous, isn't it? When you open a can of Bex, a bottle yeah. of Bex, always smells like bag of bud. And Desperados as well. I haven't sniffed that. Yeah. Have, have a sniff of Desperados. I have a little sniff of Desperados. That's my smell. Fine. What else is new in the world of vaping? That is, uh, that's all the news. That's all the news? That's all the news. Any new kits out on the market? Yes, so there's the new uh, Nautilus Zelos 2.0 kit. Which is what makes it different? We'll bring it up on the screen, you'll see that in a second. It's the tank. So they've done some really nice things with the tank. Because that, that's the thing, because the old, the old Nautilus 2 tank yeah. on the Zelos is, is problematic. Yeah, I mean, the Nort so like the Nautilus tanks were, like the Nautilus Mini, for example, was like the best selling tank we've, we've not ever had. Insanely good. That was a great tank. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't just make a 2 mil version of it. Yeah. Well, they, they did. I don't know why they didn't, because the Mini was a 2 mil. I don't know why they didn't put it through testing. Now, I know some of the thoughts were that, you know, they had to be um, brake proof and everything else. Mm. But the reality is there's been so many times, I mean, even the Nautilus X, that's no different. It's just an mm. uglier version of it. Yeah. But yeah, they've, up, they've changed the new one, so it's got like a better filling method. The way you get to the coils is a bit easier. Um, it looks looks really really nice. So and that comes with the Zelos kit and everything. Yeah, so you, you can see. Get oh, there's not one here. Ah, on right. off screen, yeah, coming on. So this is. Chance is bad boy. Let's get it out. Let's have a look. Oh, the monster still got some cap and drinking it. Now. So it does come with this enormous drip tip, which is a bit of a. That's like the old school Nautilus. They've gone retro. Yeah. Does it, has it got the, uh, is it here? Check out the camera. Show that one there. So look at this. So it's exactly the, the same almost. the same, yeah. Yeah, the, the mods mod is pretty much exactly the same. What's the airflow like? Let's have a look at this. I think you've got even more, more settings now. There's more holes. So you fill it up by. So you twist off, you twist that camera. Soft hands. <laughs> and then this bit unscrews from here, is it? So, first time. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, what is it? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This could be a separate video, clearly. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so you push that down on the screw. Oh god, that is even tighter. I see you got an Apple smartwatch there. I do. You liking it? I am, but it keeps um we try and, it's it's a bit distracting, we try and do stuff and it's like, oh you need to stand up. Leave me alone. Oh, I hate that when you sit on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's irritating. Oh, okay. Right, I've got it. I've got it. How many times has it told you how to breathe? Yeah. <laughs> quite breathe. Off. Yeah. Remember to breathe. Just relax. Just relax, relax right? I'm getting annoyed by you, mate. Getting wound up by you, bruv. There we go. I'm stressed just watching you do that. And that's not even, that's not the core base, is it? That's the core inside yeah, the That's the core's there, so you want to unscrew it from there. Again, so there's three bits of screwing you want to get out. So the change coil, that goes back in there. I did one in Whistable, and it was pretty straightforward. Oh, I just think that's bananas. So Billy must have grabbed aside the returns or something. Blame Billy. It's like they've never tested them, and they go, yep, yeah, that worked, go. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out when we get a, a thousand returns. It does seem a little bit over-engineered, just to... Take a coil out. Yeah. A little criticism. But... Yeah. But it's annoying because the refill's fine. Looks a nice tank, good airflow. Yeah. Looks like it's not going to leak very easily. But then you have you need a crowbar okay, to get the go. face open. That's another go. That was quite yeah. So there it's you go. So that's right. So you just unscrewed the base. Are you going to overly tight it? Absolutely. There you go. Push that bit down and unscrew it. Oh okay. But I mean, once it's got a bit of liquid on there as well, it's going to be. A lot easier to to open, so it might just be that first. So what's this? You just got. A, it's yeah, quite. Give that a push and a twist. It's quite rough. Here we go. There we go. So okay, <laughs> that's the Aspire Nautilus <laughs> two point zero. Okay, so very quickly, um, you'll see a box appear towards the end of the video. It's a logo like a Vapor Juice TV. Give that a click. That's a subscribe box. Why do you want to subscribe? Well, each month we pick out a random name from our subscription list and we send you out a vape goodie bag as a prize. There's literally no reason not to uh, subscribe and we'll just keep running it. So subscribe, stay subscribed, and you'll always be in the uh, prize draw. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Speak to you again soon. Lovely.